How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week 10, and last time we played a team that had a record that looked this bad, we lost in pretty embarrassing fashion. Uh, Minnesota is 2-5 and five on the season, 1-4 and four in conference. They are a higher overall team than us. Statistically, they look a little bit better in a few categories, but again, 2-5, and five, uh, we should be winning this game. I just don't want a repeat of the Virginia uh, problem that we had. We are going out of conference for this one, so if we lose it, it's not the end of the world. Thankfully, very late out of conference game for us. We will follow this one up with our final two games uh, with UNC at home and then on the route against Duke. And then we have uh, some bye weeks to go after that. Let's do a little bit of recruiting first. We have some points that we can give to players, and let's then see what uh, what games we're going to have to deal with. Before we take a look at our stuff, I am curious. What are the top classes so far this season? We have no commits. We're the only team with no commits. Always a little bit scary. Michigan with the number one class. Just the one five-star. Only 12, so this isn't as crazy as last season. Any team with two five-stars, number... Or, uh, the 11th uh, overall class at the moment, Ohio State. Two five stars, two four stars. So four total recruits is enough to get them almost top 10 uh, in the country. That's pretty impressive. We need to pick something up. What are we looking at right now? We have lost the lead against Georgia Southern for our kicker. Again, though, I'm not too worried about this. We'll bump him up to 100 to try and prevent them from going too crazy. Uh, actually, no, we're going to go 150. Uh, but their visit earns them way fewer points than ours does. They're getting 200 points for their visit uh, without the bonus goals. Uh, we're getting 600. So that's like a free week's worth of points. Uh, and then maybe we give him some more later. 88% locked. I'm not worried about it quite yet. We just had to make it through this week without getting locked out. Mike Shelby... Uh, we're 915 points behind. We have our visit next week, so we should be fine with the corner. Aaron Jenkins, we're looking okay. We're in the lead with our visit next week. So again, just holding on, looking okay. We could maybe afford to give him points, but uh, we're just going to keep it how it is. We could actually probably afford to take some points away. Similar situation to Mike Shelby here with Kyle Edwards. The strong safety. We just need to have our visit and hope that we don't get locked out this week. This is actually really scary. 1744 to stay in the battle we're just about 1700 behind losing 80 a week so we need south carolina to lose and we need to win and hope that uh our bonus grades go up conference prestige and championship contender could both go up for us this week uh and potentially give us some points i just hope we don't get locked out but i don't like our odds um logan smith we look solid i think we're gonna look solid with a lot of these guys so Let's just uh, hope for the best. We are losing some points there. Let's go up to 650 for Ben Cooper. And we have 25 guys on the board. I might scout somebody. Or maybe let's go ahead and look to see if we need to offer some scholarships. I think anybody who's on the board at this point is deserving of one. Um, just because especially we need to start getting some guys to commit. So let's uh go ahead and make sure that anybody that we have the lead with we've offered a scholarship to which it seems like we have so then let's then go to guys that we are you know right there in the mix with and, and get scholarship offers there but that will use up the rest of our points for this week and we'll hope that we don't get locked out oh some of these going to be really close just gotta hope for the best all right, so let's take a look at ESPN here. Top 25 polls. We know there was a couple of games. Uh, number two, Washington will play 19, Arizona State. Number six, Bama plays number 11, LSU. Seven, Michigan plays Michigan State. So some big games this week. Oklahoma State, Kansas are playing. Anything down here at the bottom? No. But again, we are sitting at 27th in the rankings. We could get that official ranking with a win here. How to conference could actually help us quite a bit let me go ahead and go actually quickly back into the recruiting what uh what, what could this do for our conference maybe by let's see conference prestige is a b we are behind the big 10 so maybe us beating a big 10 team even though it's not a good one could drop down their average rank and bring ours up a little bit i don't know we need a lot of chaos uh and i don't think it's gonna come quick so maybe we just hope for a lot of sec teams to lose 
Um, but I don't know. But I guess first first things first, we need to make sure we win our game. Let's get ahead and get into it. Minnesota now updated. Let's go black pants, black uh, helmet this time around. You know, let's go black socks, black shoes. <laughs> Get as close to uh, a home uniform as we can. Just the white jersey this time around. 91 overall for Minnesota to our 90 with a 91 offense and a 90 defense. So, yeah, very close matchup here. Oh, man, I love that uh, uh, goldy helmet that they have. So fantastic. The gold chrome alternate, the maroon alternate. Oh, my gosh, they have so many fantastic options. Uh, I mean, just at, uh, look at so many, like just at the helmet spot, there's so many good ones. For sure, we're going to go with the gold goldie helmet because it's so fantastic. I'm thinking, ooh, I don't know how I feel about that. I think we might go maroon with the gold pants. Um, we could just go all gold, but yeah, we're going to throw the maroon. I'm not a huge fan of the white collar with this look but we're gonna go with it anyways just that helmet is so fantastic so offensively they haven't been great this season kind of uh i don't know mediocre to bad they've been rushing the ball pretty well defensively though they've done a solid job especially for a two and five team not giving up a crazy amount of points they do have a guy visiting we'll try to ruin that and their top players are at that 90 overall mark three running backs 93 91 and 90 <laughs> uh oh we sometimes cannot stop one running back, so I don't know what's going to happen trying to stop three. Maybe they'll have some crazy injuries. A tight end, a center, and a right tackle all out. That should tremendously help our defense. But fractured, dislocated knee, broken tibia. Man, the big boys for Minnesota are really struggling with the injuries right now. We have made it safely to Minneapolis at the TCF Bank Stadium. Beautiful one. Beautiful backdrop of the city as we will go for tails because, as we know, it never fails. We win the toss, which means we're going to elect to kick this one off. I don't want to start with the ball in this game. Four mile an hour wins. And Frederick is going to be able to get us underway here. Beautiful fall day here as this will be a returnable kick. Kale Mackey getting a decent gun down there. And they get almost to the 25-yard line. So three really good running backs. Uh, definitely something I'm worried about. We're going to be bringing a lot of pressure in this game. The last thing we want them to do is run. And is this from the Wildcat? Okay, Trace and Potts, five yards on first down. Well, if they're going to run the Wildcat all game, I think that we should just be able to sell out to stop the run. Um, very interesting decision. Another, basically, what would be a QB blast, just a, a running back running it. And it's working well as he gets to the edge for 22. I'm curious if we have to worry about anything else. Uh, safety blitz this time. They're going to look to the sideline. I expect it legitimately just to be the exact same play. No, man in motion will try to protect the handoff. But look at the blocking out towards the edge. Don't tell me that this is how this game is going to go. Because it's going to be real embarrassing if we lose to the Wildcat. I will say it certainly doesn't help that uh, you know they're in the hurry up. But we need to be doing a better job than we are so far. Another run up the middle, and he just kicks it to the edge, and there's so much space every time. Somehow just gets us to commit into the center and then bounces it out for way too many yards. So blitzing has done literally nothing for us. Uh, and thank goodness, a little false start on first and a goal from the 10 will back him up. Give us a chance to make some subs as well. Maybe they didn't really intend to stay in that formation the whole time because they do have a quarterback now on first and 15, um, which is very curious. Imagine they step back to pass. Guy open in the end zone. <laughs> we just got absolutely embarrassed on that drive. Cole Kramer comes in and says, all right, thanks for getting me down the field. I'm just going to throw a super easy touchdown pass to a man who was completely unguarded. Disappointing. Well, that's not an optimal start to the game. Defense, after a very good showing last time against Miami, has come out and not shown us very much. Return gets to the 15. Okay, not a great start for the special teams either. First and 10, we're going to come out and just run it up the middle. If they're going to run a bunch, we're going to try to do the same. CJ Beasley, not quite as successful, but still finds six yards. And what hurts about uh, that drive is 
We come out in the monster formation, but they look kind of weird, so let's, uh, can we audible out of this? It's not exactly what we wanted. We're gonna, we're gonna throw the ball here on one of the screens. Bedgood has it. Not doing for a whole lot. Lost a yard. Monster formation didn't work. But as I was trying to say, they did that drive with a bunch of starting offensive linemen out injured. So a little bit disappointing. Tough throw to Logan Malden. It's almost intercepted as the ball was thrown behind him and it's fourth and five. And I'm going to go for this. See what we can do on fourth and five. We'll step back to pass. And B may be open. There's Tyson Mobley. Thankfully, got a little bit worried as we were running out of space uh, outside the pocket there, but drive stays alive. Let's try a jet sweep to Logan Malden. Maybe not the best guy to run the play, but uh, he could potentially break tackles or he could just get a yard for us on the play. Don't think I've had the best play calling so far. Second and nine, potentially an open man. No. Trying to throw the timing to Bedgood, and the ball's way over his head. Grayson missing that one. It's third and nine again. So not the best start for this offense. Going to try to throw kind of a timing route. Marquise Jackson comes down with it, breaks a tackle. Almost broke another one. Gets us 30 yards. Oh, that was so close to him just going to the house. Let's try to get a little bit of a running game going as we will go with the counter on this first down. Brain Bennett turning it upfield, getting five on it. Take his first carry of the game. And now Beasley will come in to run for his own attempt. The zone play, cutting it upfield early, getting seven yards in another first down. First and ten, we're going to go with the inverted veer. Grayson trying to keep it, getting hit, breaking a tackle, and then getting back to the line of the scrimmage. Line didn't hold up much for us on that one. How about a dive up the middle? Second and ten. Again, really trying to get the running game going, and C.J. Beasley has the first and goal. Kind of got pushed forward by the defense for a couple extra yards, and he got 13 on the play. So a much different drive than Minnesota's opening one, but we'll see if we can punch it into the end zone now. Looking for the running back, Braden Bennett. Couldn't hold on through the contact, and it's an incompletion. See if we can get a run to make it a manageable third and goal if we don't score here. Looking for the dive up the middle. Beasley fighting for the extra yards. Didn't get enough. Still five in its third and goal from what? The two now, I think. Ooh, and that's a very generous spot. Balls at the one. So it's JJ Barr coming in. Fullback dive time on third and goal, and he's in. No problem. If you're the opposing team and you see JJ Barr come in, you got to be worried because we have a very high success rate, success rate running our fullback dives. And it is now tied up at 7-all. The defense will get another chance to come out onto the field and hopefully do a little bit better than they did the first time out. Four wide receivers in the formation on this one. They did have success passing. This looks like it's going to be a run. It is out towards the edge. And again, dude, we just keep coming up against such great blocking wide receivers. And they are going to pick up almost everything that they needed. 119 rushing yards already for Minnesota. That one went for 53. As on this first down, I'm kind of expecting another one. It's up the middle. We're there to hit him early. Just kind of got the jump on the snap, and it's a loss of two. Doesn't feel like it's going to be easy, but at some point, our defense might get a stop. Second and 12, another handoff here. Just waited for him. He ran into a man, made a mistake, and we got him in the third down situation. And we're going to take a big risk here. I expect them to pass. But we're going safety blitz on the play. Hoping for the best. Uh-oh. Got dusted with kill and he needs to make a big diving tackle. He gets the tackle. But he gives up one too many yards and it's a first down for the Golden Gophers. So definitely not what we wanted to see there. Kale Mackey sidelined right now since we can't make our substitutions. Certainly going to hurt. Trying to bring a little bit of his own blitz in. Somehow they cut six yards on that play. Strong from the wide receiver to fall backwards there. Going to try to bring another blitz on what might be the final play of the quarter. Quarterback all the time in the world. He's going to scramble, and oh, he just avoids the tackles and waltzes in. So that'll almost end the first quarter, but we're going to be down 14-7. So this kick should end the first, and maybe we can turn it into a touchdown. A good return is all that we need from Marquise Jackson. The blocking needs to be good, and it's completely non-existent on that one. So our special teams is not good today. 
And we will head into the second, trailing by a touchdown. One thing that I need to make sure that we avoid in this game is trying to match the pace at which Minnesota is playing at. Because when we try to speed up our offense, that's when we start to throw interceptions. Unfortunately, they've done a pretty solid job at slowing us down and making us go to the air. So, we'll hope that we can avoid any problems over the middle. I see him. It's Tyson Moby. He holds onto that one through the contact, and that's a good 14-year-old pickup. A new set of downs gives us the opportunity to run again, so we'll try another counter. And here we're going to try to follow the blockers, and Beasley does a solid job to pick up four yards there. We're going to try the toss play. Not one that we see often, but on second and six, we'll give a chance for Beasley to get it. And he spins trying to find some space up the, through all those defenders and gets a yard. And we're going to go to the air on this third and five. Marquise Jackson, I'm going to send him deep. You never know. They're playing up pretty far. Marquise might be gone. Grayson barely gets the throw off. Can Marquise get it? He gets it. Not quite in stride. Has to jump for it. So he is caught from behind, but it's 49 yards. What a tough throw for Grayson as a man who's charging towards him and hitting him in the process. So a great first down puts us just on the edge or just inside the red zone. And now we'll continue trying to run. Beasley, a lot of spin moves. I like to do him with him because he's pretty solid, but only two yards there. Braden Bennett will come in at running back for this play. We're going to look to pass to him. He's open, wide open, completely ignored over the middle, but we fumble the ball. Oh, these fumbles are just killing us these past couple of games. Braden has to hold on to that one. That was a first and goal, I think, too. Brutal. That is not what we want to see. First and 10. Bring in the safety blitz. We will hit them in the backfield. Good hit from Sidney McRae. It's a loss of three. Bring up second and 13. And now I will absolutely be praying for a pass as we aren't bringing any pressure on second down. They are going to run it. It's a counter. Then look at the blocking. We can't disengage. We have linebackers getting just locked up by wide receivers. So they run for 21 yards. Well, we are just going to use safety blitz after safety blitz if that's going to be how it goes for us. First down, bringing pressure, trying to get to the quarterback. We hit him as he's throwing. He is lucky that that one went forward and uh, was incomplete and not a fumble. Oh my gosh, Marquise Jackson has a mild concussion. So we have lost one of the biggest playmakers on this roster. Oh, things are getting more and more difficult for us by the minute. False start though, their second of the game. So that's going to be very useful for us as now maybe second and 15. They should be expected to go to the air and they will. Didn't cover my man. Quarterback's going to scramble. I'm going to try to strip the ball every time he scrambles because we need to create some sort of turnover. Third and six. I won't expect them to go to the ground here. Maybe a screen. We'll put uh, one of our defensive linemen into a QB spy and the quarterback just absolutely bamboozled me. I thought he was getting ready to scramble, and he was, and I came up to stop the scramble, and he threw right over my head to the running back for 44 yards. How is it that it's always the teams that have such bad records that play us this well? First and 10, hoping for the best. This one's going to be a run up the middle, and at least when they run it, we've been bringing massive blitzes, so we're kind of slowing them down there. Unfortunately, the running back is still averaging like nine yards per carry. So not not optimal. This is a screen. I can't get out there, though. Steele needs to get this tackle. Big hit. Only gave up a yard. Trayson Potts has got to be getting tired because he continues to get the ball. After the turnover, a great chance for the defense to get off the field on third and eight. A little bit worried about some out routes getting uh, to us. Um, over the middle. Yep, saw that one coming a mile away. Not sure where Mason Shelton is trying to cover the tight end. Uh, we get beat over the top. A minute and 54 before the half. We're down. Two touchdowns. Must score on this drive. So with Marquise Jackson out injured the rest of the game with the concussion, Bedgood is going to be our return man for the rest of this one. I don't really like our odds of having a great return with him. And I probably should be taking touchbacks for the rest of the game when the opportunity presents itself. Not only did we lose our return man, but we lost our biggest deep ball threat. Still going to start this with a four verts. They're bringing pressure. A might be open. We can't get it off in time. And it's incomplete. Grayson throwing 60% on the day. 
See if we can pick something up on this second and 10. Maybe over the middle. That's a tough throw. We find Dion Fountain just needs to get out of bounds to stop the clock. Gives us a third and five. And we might just have to get a little bit cheesy with them at points. On this third down, I'm going to get outside the pocket. Running back is wide open. It's Brain Ben, and he dropped the pass. Oh, that's brutal. We're going for this, though. I cannot believe that he would drop that. So fourth and five. We have to go for it outside the pocket. Maybe Logan Malden open. Thank goodness we found somebody who's got great hands, and he hold on to that one. And in 31, we're going to take our first time out. So from just across the 40-yard line, a minute and a half, we're going to hope to get something done. Oh, that's such a risky throw. Bad good kind of got ran into as we were trying to find him with the ball, and it's incomplete. Four wide receivers out to the right as we will snap this ball and look for the timing route to Tyson Mobley, and he can't hold on to it through the contact now. These defensive backs are really doing a number on us. We'll send Malcolm Williams deep. And Malcolm Williams might be open, just can't even get the ball off in time. B coming across was open. It's fourth and ten. And again, we got to go for this. This isn't how I want it to happen, but we have to score a touchdown on this drive. Otherwise, we're in a lot of trouble. And that's an interception, hopefully not a pick six. He's got a lot of guys in front of him. And he falls out of bounds. Two turnovers in the first half. We're not winning this game at this rate. Defense has to figure something out in a hurry. If they don't manage to get a stop, we are dead in the water as they start this drive at the 25, and they will throw to a wide-open man. Brown Stevens completely uncovered. Nobody even near him, and he gets a quick first down. This team might be the most frustrating team that I've ever played with in my entire history playing this game. Thankfully, they try to run it there and lose some yards and have to take a timeout, but how inconsistent can we be? Second and 13 with a minute and one. Still holding out hope that we can get some sort of stop. Quarterback scrambling. Shelton needs to get the tackle and he missed. This is... This is awful. So I don't know what to do at this point. Defense is just full of holes. And the offense is turning the ball over like crazy. But we have to continue to pass. If we want to stay at all in this game... Uh, I'm tempted to go four verts here. Let's send them deep. One deep safety there, pressed up. Somebody needs to beat their man. There it is quickly. Tyson Mobley. Just, Grayson can't find these guys on the run. They're always just so inaccurate that they have to jump for the ball. That takes so many yards away from us. So, clock's going to be moving as 50 seconds left. Right bumper could be open. Bennett somehow held on to that one. He's already screwed us twice, but trying to atone for his sins. Picks up the first down. And he's going to be my main target again on this one. 44 seconds left now. Pressure coming. A's open. It's Dion Fountain, and he just dropped the ball. Oh, wow. It's impressive how uh, bad our catching has been so far in this game. Maybe Bedgood can come down with one. There's a first down at the 11. Trying not to take our timeouts if we don't have to. We're going to go with the midline read option. This one has been so, so for us. Grayson might have the blocking to get into the end zone, and he does. So back to a two-score game. Hopefully we haven't given Minnesota too much time. 32 seconds and two timeouts left for them. So my hope with the remainder of this second quarter is that they try to pass the ball a lot and throw an interception. Uh, I'm definitely worried about that as, oh man, Kai Thomas just took a shot on that return. Four receivers out to the left for Minnesota. 29 seconds. They are going to go back to pass. Guys open. Diggs needed to get there. Couldn't quite make the adjustment. Gave up four yards, and the clock is moving. And I'm taking a timeout here. Didn't audible to the right play. Accidentally audibled into the cover two. I wanted to go into the two-man under just to get the extra safety. Hopefully now... Nothing bad happens. They're going to run the ball. Diggs needs to get the tackle or at least slow him up. Oh, my goodness. They take their time out with five seconds left, and we'll expect a Hail Mary here. So we will go with the man up three deep, pretty much expecting the Hail Mary. And, yeah, that's what it's going to be. So try to get Shelton back there. There's a sack. I'm going to take the time out. I don't know why, but I like the odds. Got to try to create every chance for ourselves to come back. So... You never know. They could get a strip sack, or we could just strip the ball here. 
but we need every opportunity that we can get. Man, it doesn't work out. They do get seven yards rushing, but we go into the locker rooms down two touchdowns, and at this point, it's going to be desperation time with our six-minute quarters trying to erase that. We do get the ball, and we need to score a touchdown coming out to start the third quarter, but man, get rid of the two turnovers, and we're looking real good in this game, but that's just how we play. It's a team that lives and dies by the turnover. So the Gophers kicking this one off to start off our third quarter. And I should probably take the touchback with Bedgood, but I'm going to bring it out anyways. And it wasn't worth it. We are now in a spot where we can run our offense a little bit. But I'm definitely worried about how much time is left on the clock. CJ Beasley makes a man miss. Breaks a tackle, stays in bounds, breaks another tackle. And just like that, we're across midfield. Let's go in the hurry up. We don't run the slip screen often. We're going to give it a shot on this one. See if maybe we can find Beasley and continue to go to him. The blocking could be there. He needs to break that tackle and he won't. Oh, the block just didn't quite hold up. There was a lot of space in front of him. It's a real shame because that was close to being great. Second and 10, we will step back to pass. They're bringing pressure. I'm throwing off my back foot and <laughs> somehow JJ Barr, the fullback, getting a great catch there. Didn't really mean to throw off my back foot. I panicked there. And because I panicked, we get a deal with a third and eight situation. I'm not pleased with it, but maybe an easy one. Malcolm Williams, easy catch for the freshman. Nine yards and a first down. So on this first down, again, stepping back to pack. Looking for somebody. Let's go with the safe throw. Give it to Dion Fountain. A little step back cheese. That's a great nine-yard pickup. So second to one, we'll run the ball. Looking for something. CJ Beasley, I think, yeah, had enough for the first down to get us inside the red zone. And I am a little bit worried about the clock. We've burned off a couple of minutes already. We'll go to the air on this first down. They're bringing pressure. I'm expecting Logan Malden to be open. He's wide open on the slant route. I'm going to try to dive for the end zone, but we don't quite. So it's first and goal. A little bit shy. And this is a risky one because these plays usually don't work for me. But I'm going QB blast on first and goal. Hoping that Grayson can get in. The blocking actually is fantastic. Enough to get into the end zone. And Grayson gets his second rushing touchdown. It's just a one touchdown game now. So this would be a great chance for the defense to make up for the mistakes they've made earlier in the game. And maybe get a quick stop for us. Uh... Special teams needs to do their job first. Could return for Kai Thomas. Kill Mackey having to dive to stop that one. They've got four wide receivers. Trips to the right, but we're going to bring a blitz on first down. It is a little option out to the edge. Shelton, great tackle. Gets the man knocked down out of bounds for a loss of two. We are very hit or miss when we defend the option. So I'm definitely glad that we were able to get the stop there. They're going to go right back to it. Charles Steele needs to get the tackle, and he does for a loss of two. So now third and 14, we absolutely can expect them to go to the air. And we'll go with the nickel. Third and 14, 3-3-5. Three, three, this is a slip screen. I was very late to react to it, but it's going to be enough. They get back to the original line of scrimmage, but it's not nearly enough, and the defense does finally hold. So unfortunately... We won't have a great return man back there, but we will get a chance to tie this ball game up. Assuming we hold on to the ball through this punt return. Man, who doesn't get the chance to return it often? Bedgood getting a couple of blocks and a couple of yards. 2.38 now left in the third quarter and a chance for us to tie the game on this drive. CJ Beasley gets a decent carry up the middle. Five yards on that play. We're going with a risky play. We're going to go and try the jet sweep again. I don't feel super confident. But if Bedgood can get the blocks out towards the edge, no. J.J. Barr just didn't get quite a good enough block. I needed to cut that upfield sooner. It's third and eight now. Let's go to the air and hope for the best. They're going to bring some pressure. Got to try to throw the toe, try to throw the timing route, and it works. Tyson Mobley just open, holds on to it. Again, Grayson getting hit as he's throwing. So way to stick in there and make that tough one. Sure, Minnesota's defense getting a little bit frustrated that we're coming back. First and 10, trying to run this one. CJ Beasley up the middle again. We're getting positive yards to the offensive line, getting a decent push on almost every play. Go with the bubble screen on this second and seven. Looks like it could work. Beasley gets the catch, has some space, and picks up enough yards for a third and short now. Really just trying to mix up the play calling as much as we can. 
But this one seems pretty obvious. Third and two. We're going with the dive up the middle. Beasley has more than enough space to pick that first down up. And now it's a team we've rushed for over 100 yards. Really getting close to the end of the third quarter. Step back to throw. X could be open. B could be open. Let's throw the safe one. Give it to Tyson Mobley. Just got to get the positive yards on that. I think we had other guys potentially open deep, but just need to make sure that we're completing passes. This will likely be the final play of the third quarter unless we get a first down. Second and seven. We're going to try the counter. Beasley gets forward, rolls over a man. Gets us to that third and two as the clock will hit that triple zero. So into the fourth quarter we go. Down a touchdown. Driving, nearing the end zone. A chance to tie it up. If the defense gets one more stop, I feel confident. Otherwise, we could at least fight for overtime. Of course, before all that happens, we need to convert on this third down. Trying the run. Looks like they're pretty stacked in the box. They're waiting for it. Beasley doesn't get it. It's fourth and inches. Oh, that's disastrous. Well, we're going to come out in the I formation and go with the QB sneak. And look at that. Box is empty. Center has no pressure. Grayson, no way he doesn't get that. So long as he doesn't fumble the ball, that should have been good every time. We're going to quickly try to reset and get back to the line and run another one. Give it to CJ Beasley. Halfback zone. He's got some blockers in front of him. It's great on the blocking. And Beasley diving for the corner of the end zone is in. It's a tie ball game here at the start of the fourth quarter. If the defense gets a stop, we might be able to just win this in regulation. Just a fantastic effort from the blocking on that play to spring the touchdown free. And now, I mean, again, if the defense and the special teams holds, this game could be ours and we are expected to win. So I'm going to expect our guys to do good. We've been bringing this safety blitz a lot today. We're going to do it again. So they go split backs on this first down. That's kind of a new look for us. Looks like it's going to be a run, and they go up the middle. Wiley, a lot of space. Bad cut from him, but just like that, 24 yards, they're almost to midfield. They come out in the hurry up, which kind of makes me think that we're going to see another run right off the bat. I don't like that one bit. Expecting an option, and they do hand it off again. And again, he gets six yards. We're going to have to bring a ton of pressure, I guess. They're going to keep running that play. Second and four, man in motion. It is handed off again. He doesn't have enough for the first down. There is a chance that we hold him on this third and inches. And on this one, I'm expecting them not to hand it off up the middle. I'll tell everybody to crash, but I'm going to be ready for the option out towards the edge. No, they throw it, and it's incomplete. The quarterback throwing it immediately. He can't find his man, so it's fourth and inches. And apparently, they're going to punt the ball away. We are in the safe man. Because we don't want this to go poorly. A fake would be pretty brutal. No, it is going to be punted away. We're going to call the fair catch. Let this one hopefully bounce into the end zone. And with a tie game and four and a half minutes left to play, we have a chance to take our first lead. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't really tempted to just throw up a home run pass. But I don't think it would be a great idea. So instead, we'll run the ball and just let CJ Beasley continue to carry us in his backpack on this game. CJ's averaging a phenomenal seven yards per carry as we will go to Malcolm Williams on this jet sweep. Been really enjoying these plays. They've been working pretty well, except not that time. The block doesn't hold up. We lose a yard, and it's third and three. We're going to try the read option here. From the Wildcat, of course, Beasley and Bennett in the formation. Beasley's going to be able to keep it. He's got some blocking out in front of him, and he's got the first down. And a decent chunk more. So the Wildcat works for us just as well as it worked for them at the start of the game. I'm going to try to continue to run this ball as much as we can. Let's motion DJ Johnson over. And run it out towards the edge. The sweep. Beasley breaks a tackle. Stays on his feet. This man is on an absolute mission right now. Almost 150 yards on the day. He's a little bit tired though. So Braden Bennett has come in. Second and two. He has a fumble already on the day. A beautiful juke there to find the open space, and now he's got a seven-yard carry. Let's go back to this bubble screen on first down. It worked pretty well last time. It looks like it could work very well this time. I juked into the defender. Unfortunately, I didn't expect that extra block, but still nine yards on the pass. And I would be lying if I said I wasn't thinking about starting to burn the clock. We're getting near field goal range here as we convert this second in inches into another first down. But... Two minutes to go. I mean, Minnesota's got to be worried. 
Ooh, this scares me. We've called the Y screen. I think we're gonna run it. Oh, no. Malden caught it. I thought it was a pick six for sure. I am happy to lose four yards. That was not a good decision on the play call. Didn't let it develop and paid for it. So let's try just a normal option play this time. See how it works for us. Oh, I read the pitch wrong and I just lost the game. I thought he was coming for us. Third turnover. I just thought he was coming straight at us and I made the wrong decision. And now we might have lost. So that is entirely on me. And I think the choice here is just to bring as much pressure and hope for a stop or some sort of, oh, that could have been picked off. Some sort of turnover of our own. And either we stop them or they score quickly. The worst thing that could happen to us would be uh, a long, long drive and then picking one up. Quarterback scrambling McCray with the diving sack. Gets this to a third and 11 and a great chance to get off the field. Unfortunately, they're going to come out in the hurry up, which I don't think benefits us very much. We know it's going to be a pass. Can we get the stop? Putting Cheney Jr. into the spy just to be careful as they will step back to pass and there's a man wide open on the out route and he gets out of bounds. Minute and four left, first down. I don't think that we are in their kicker's field goal range. We're going to bring a massive blitz. The engage eight on first down. Got to try to get to him. Slow him down. Maybe they make a mistake. Stokes drops the interception. We can't have that many. Second and 10 with a minute to go. Minnesota's five wide, and we're bringing another blitz on this one. I just got to hope for the best. Try to avoid out routes. They go over the middle. Charles Steele gets the stop. They might be in field goal range, but it's third and four. And if we can get into position on this one, we'll go to the air. Quarterback, plenty of time throwing it. Has his man, but he's short of the line again. It's fourth and two, and we're going to take the timeout with 39 seconds left. So it's the field goal formation. We know this kicker isn't the best as apparently we have a man out Beasley out for 11 weeks with a torn pack that's the rest of the season the kicker misses the kick it's gonna be fielded I thought it was out of bounds Bedgood bringing it out I didn't want for this to happen but it's happened anyways he breaks a tackle still on his feet Bedgood going down the sideline one man to beat he's not gonna be able to do it but with 24 seconds we might be in field goal range what an effort for the backup returner late in the game Stokes Jr. has a strained peck, so a bunch of guys getting injured. 24 seconds and two timeouts. All that we care about now, though, is just getting into field goal range, finding Dion Fountain open. He's got the first down clutch. That stops the clock with 20 seconds to go. I have absolutely no idea what our kicker's field goal range is today. There's a wide open DJ Johnson. That has to be it with 15 seconds. We're going to center this ball up and hopefully kick the game-winning field goal but it needs to be centered up because we're going to get iced. So Bennett comes in. A fumble here would end me. Oh, I would be so sad. Bennett, pretty solid. Let's go in the hurry up so that we can make sure we take the timeout with the perfect amount of time on the clock. Going to snap, or going to do it with two seconds left. And it's time for Frederick to win this game. There's the ice. Minnesota. This could be pretty heartbreaking for him. A 34-yard field goal. I don't feel at all confident about this. I'll tell you that much. We got all of it. The kick is pushing right. Oh, it sneaks through the uprights. And as time expires, we win against a now 2-6 Minnesota on the road by a game-winning walk-off field goal. Wow. Bedgood with the field goal return. He had one man to beat to take that to the house, but what an effort to break those initial tackles, and what a freaking game. It's an ESPN classic, of course. Too many turnovers, three turnovers, but finally, we managed to win a game where we have a bunch of them. Man, our ball security is not good. So happy to have that win. Who knows, maybe, just maybe we get ranked this week. Oh my goodness, I am tired of playing these close ridiculous games we destroyed time of possession i think that's what won out in the end we passed for 296 that's a lot for us ran for 163 but gave up 206 on the ground that opening couple of drives from minnesota were just so brutal 22 first downs and how about that we shut them out in the second half zero points in the third and fourth quarter as we scored 17 in those and it was enough for us to get the comeback and the win 
players of the game, Grayson McCall, somehow two turnovers for him, but a couple of touchdowns. And he passed pretty well at the end of the day. And Sidney McRae with a clutch sack opened it up, gave us the chance to win. And he deserves, I think, our defensive player of the game spot. We are now ranked, but unfortunately, we had an injury. And I think it's a pretty important one. CJ Beasley is who it was. Our starting running back with the torn peck is out for the rest of his junior season. So we are going into, uh, I guess we're going to have to start Braden Bennett and we'll drop down to the third string. 11 weeks. That is a that is a tough injury. He had such a good game. and He was having a solid season, especially with how we're splitting the carries for him to have almost 800 yards is very impressive. So again, Brain Bennett will become our new starter, and Isaiah Conley will become our new backup. Um, Conley's a great back. He's pretty similar to Braden Bennett, maybe a little bit quicker, but we lose the uh, the smarts, the awareness of CJ Beasley. I think some of the break tackle or, or uh, elusiveness, uh, 91 spin move, I guess Braden has solid amount, but just the, the carrying rating, that's going to hurt. We might see some more fumbles just from running the ball, but uh, we'll definitely miss CJ. Well, let's go ahead and advance the week here into week 11, our first bye of the season. We've made it this far, and we're finally going to have a bye week. Um, maybe we'll be ranked. Our offensive coordinator levels up. That's great news for us. Uh, we do get locked out by Kyle Edwards, the 79 overall strong safety, so I don't think we're going to be able to unlock him. Billy Gray commits to Vanderbilt. We get locked out by Danny Wilson and Matt Brigham. Not a great week uh, in recruiting, and I think maybe we set our sights too high. Ton of recruiting battles. Nobody committed still. We did get a bunch of XP, and we are ranked 24th in the country. And hey, we're going to survive at least one week while being ranked because we can't lose the bye. At least hopefully not. Let's go ahead and upgrade our offensive coordinator right now while we're here and we're gonna just uh yeah we're gonna up our pass blocking i think try to get that all the way and then we'll go for the bulldozer afterwards getting close to another chad stags level but head coaching wise we are a ways off and uh, that has me pretty worried around the country how about our top 25 polls anything good happening uh we need to see a lot of losses number two washington lost to Arizona State. We had number six, Alabama, losing their third to a now number six, LSU, Oklahoma at four, lost to Iowa State. Any others? Number 13, Oklahoma State. Number 10, Auburn lost. Number uh, nine, Ole Miss. Number 17, Michigan State. We're finally up in here. We definitely belong. NC State, Baylor, and Mississippi State all dropping out of the rankings. Oregon State was receiving votes. Are we ranked in the media poll in the BCS? In the media, we are now not ranked. Early in this season, we were getting a lot of love, but they've changed their tune there. We're sitting 26th. And then the BCS, I will expect a 24th, but it's a 25th. I guess it's a combination of the polls to an extent. So, uh, hey, at least we've made it back into the rankings. That'll be good for a couple of reasons. Um, I'm happy about that. Heisman Watch. Has, wow, it's changed to the point where Grayson McCall is now on the the watch list. Uh, I don't agree with that. Um, I mean, he has 13 interceptions to 15 passing touchdowns on the season and is only throwing at 65%. But I mean, I guess he does have 11 rushing touchdowns, which equals his uh, career high for a season. But I mean, I wouldn't complain if they wanted to give us the Heisman. We do also have awards semifinalists. We'll take a look at these. Grayson for the Maxwell. Grayson for the Walter Camp. Oh my gosh. Half of the dang team for the better. Shelton Steele, Mackie, Diggs, Roger Reed. All up there as semifinalists for the same award. The Nagurski, we've got Mackie and Steele. The O'Brien, Grayson's up there. Uh, nobody for the Walker, which is kind of surprising the way everything's going. Nobody for the Bolitnikov. Kale Mackey, not up for the Mackey. The Outland, we don't have anybody for the Remington. Uh, okay, Donnell Wilson, our center, has made it up there. Just barely as a semifinalist. The Lombardi, Sidney McRae is up there. Uh, he's having a good season. I think next year's senior season is going to be very solid, as he'll definitely break 90 overall. Best linebacker, Mackey, Steele, and Shelton in the top five. Unsurprising. Diggs and Reed in the top five for the Thorpe. 
Uh, no way we are up for the Groza or the guy, but best returner, kind of expecting, yeah, Marquise Jackson to take that spot too. Touchdowns on kick returns. Very contentious battle here with Reggie Love the third from uh, Illinois, who has two touchdowns as well, but fewer punt return yards and about half as many kick return yards. But Marquise, man, we missed him at the end of last game. Thankfully, it didn't matter too much. Glad it was just a concussion for him. So that's going to do it for this episode. Man, what a game. How inconsistent can we be? Uh, it doesn't make sense. Let me know your thoughts on the game. I'm curious what you guys were thinking when I made that mistake, pitching the ball on the option. I There's a reason I don't run those option plays often, and that's the reason. Almost just absolutely killed us. Ends up working out in the end. Um, so I don't know if you like the video. Please feel free to hit a like. And if you enjoy the content on the channel, please hit subscribe and while you're down there, head to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster, as well as links to my Twitter and our community Discord, as well as the college football revamped mod if you're, of course, trying to get it for yourself. But that being said, thanks again for watching. My name is Goonmaster, you guys are the Teal Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.